Hey everyone, Victor is here and I have a real fun question here for you. So we are starting with this four-membered ring containing the OH group and the ketone, so it kind of looks like an aldol. And we are making through some sort of magic this six-membered ring with a double bond and a ketone, so that would be an alpha-beta unsaturated compound. And the question is, can we figure out the reasonable curved arrow mechanism for this question? Now, when it comes to this question, the very first thing that jumped at me right away is that I have the aldol starting material, although in this case we have a cyclic aldol, so we would have a cycle sitting something like that. And I have an alpha-beta unsaturated compound here, which is also looking like a cycle. And another thing to remember here is that both of these structures are a part of the aldol condensation mechanism. However, in this case, I cannot directly go from my aldol to my alpha-beta unsaturated compound because structurally we start with a four-membered ring and we finish with a six-membered ring, which means that we are looking at the ring opening step somewhere in our mechanism, which we then are going to close back up again to make our final product. So the idea for my mechanism here would be to start with the aldol and form open chain carbonyl, and then from that carbonyl I'm going to form a different aldol from where I'm going to make my final product, alpha-beta unsaturated compound. And since every step in the aldol condensation reaction is an equilibrium, I can just use the template for the aldol condensation and go in whichever direction I need to go in order to get me to, well, where I need to go. And so now, when we have the general idea for our mechanism and how we need to proceed here, Let's give it a try. I'm going to start by drawing my starting material and the ethoxide base, and the very first step that I'm going to do here is going to be the proton transfer, deprotonating my molecule at the OH group and forming the corresponding negatively charged intermediate. Now, if we were doing the aldol condensation reaction, the predecessing step to this one would have been making of this new carbon-carbon bond, which means that now I need to go back and break this bond. And in order to do that, I'm going to have my electrons from the oxygen go down, breaking that bond, and essentially making an enolate species looking like this. And I am purposefully drawing this molecule like this, having horrible bond angles, so it is easier to see what we have changed here. Now, if I were to redraw this molecule in a slightly better linear fashion, I would end up with a seven carbon chain looking like this. So, counting the carbons in this chain, I see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons in this chain, which means that in order to reclose this ring into a six-membered ring, I can no longer do this because that brings me back to my four-membered ring. So that means that in order to close my six-membered ring, I would have to reanalyze a different position in my molecule. So I will redraw my molecule, and instead of doing the nucleophilic attack, I am going to do the proton transfer that essentially going to recreate the enolate on the other side of my molecule, looking like this. So now, if I were to do my nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl like so, I will end up making a new carbon-carbon bond between this carbon of my enolate and the carbon of my carbonyl, which is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six-membered ring over here, looking like this, and if I wanted to renumber my atoms, I would have my carbons one, two, three, four, five, and six, like that. And I guess for the completeness sake, we can number our carbon number seven and indicate it over here as well. Now, the next step in our mechanism that we are doing here in the basic media is going to be to protonate our negatively charged species with our solvent, which is ethanol, so oxygen is going to grab this proton from ethanol, making another aldol intermediate, and of course the ethoxide that we have just generated. Then, from this point, we are going to reanalyze our molecule by pulling one of these protons off from the alpha position, making the corresponding enolate, and the only thing that is left for us is to kick our living group out, giving us our final product. Easy peasy. 
So reactions like that are a common guest on final exams, so make sure you practice your mechanisms to the point where you can write them in both directions. So by the time the exam comes, you'll be all ready and nothing can scare you. And as always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button and let me know in the comments below. Your likes and comments really help promoting these videos and help more students see those. Check out this video next and I'll see you next time.